This week's video is sponsored by BetterHelp. I didn't really like Cruella. I'm not gonna lie, I don't know how, but I feel like an asshole here. Because before seeing Cruella and deciding to dedicate over two hours of my afternoon to this, I was asking around to friends and fans to see what the general consensus was, and most of you said, yeah, it's a fun time. And when I was checking Letterbox after the movie, I saw a bunch of people who I usually agree with say the exact same thing. Which left me thinking, am I just, uh, not fun anymore? But I don't think so. Or at least, I'm gonna try and work through that by talking about why this movie is in fact not uh, great. Cruella is a really fun concept, directed by a really fun director, starring a really fun actress, with a score from one of the most interesting composers, and it still somehow is diluted into the same watered-down contemporary Disney film we've seen dozens of times before. To keep it brief, I just think it got f***ed in the editing room. But before we go too far, I want to thank BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Is there something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? Because personally, I have a lot on my plate, between writing this short film, staying on top of the podcast, staying on top of YouTube, the inside of my head looks like that one scene in Spongebob, you know, you know the one. And there's no better way to go about that than with therapy. I've always been a huge advocate for therapy, and that's why I'm uh, super happy about BetterHelp sponsoring this video. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating within 48 hours. It's not a crisis line, it's not self-help, it is professional counseling done securely online. There's a broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's 15,000 plus counselor network, which may not be locally available in a lot of areas. The service is available for clients worldwide, and you can log into your account anytime and send a message to your counselor. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses, plus you can schedule weekly video and photo sessions, which means you won't ever have to sit in any uncomfortable waiting rooms like you do with traditional therapy. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic practices, and they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. Plus, it's more affordable than traditional offline counseling, and financial aid is available. In short, BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. Get 10% off your first month by going to betterhelp.com slash Karsten, that's H-E-L-P, and join over a million people who are taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. It's easy to come across like a broken record at this point when talking about Disney live-action remakes, because we've established at this point that they have no plans of stopping production on them, and we get it, they're boring, nobody likes them, nobody's saying anything new at this point. And videos like this one only push out more buzz and uh, encourage people to see it out of sheer curiosity. But for some reason, Cruella felt different, and that's entirely on me for thinking that. And that's probably because there was already a live-action Dalmatians movie, this didn't feel like a pointless live-action remake. Also because of the loaded cast and crew attached to this, all that said I expected at the very least a pretty fun movie. And sure, I was entertained, although I wouldn't necessarily say my attention being held warrants how long this thing is. All that aside, this was a colossal disappointment. To start, this movie takes place in 1970s London in the midst of the punk rock revolution, and the film tries its best to match that aesthetic, as Cruella is a bit of a punk rocker herself. And obviously, I don't think there's anything wrong with using that aesthetic in the movies, even kids' movies, but the way Disney, the biggest company in the world that has proven to care more about than they do about art, well, it just feels corny. Like, glad we're getting the retelling of the punk rock revolution from uh, Walt Disney Studios. I know that's kind of a shallow complaint, considering there's a kids movie from 2004 that I love that also happens to mimic a hardcore rocker style, but I think School of Rock succeeds at not feeling corny because it comes from a very clear place of admiration for the style, as it consistently references historically significant people and embraces the grime of this culture in a silly way. I mean, the Freddie Jones character is punk in a really funny and self-aware way. And I'm not an expert in the 1970s punk scene in London, but the only energy I get from watching Cruella is uh, Disney. It feels like a Disney movie, which let, let me explain myself. When I say Disney movie, I don't mean like a Walt Disney Mickey Mouse princess movie. Obviously, it feels like a Disney movie because one, it is a Disney movie, and two, it's about a story that originally came out of a Disney movie. The term Disney movie has been redefined for me over the years, and I look at it more as a movie that does not function on its own, but is instead a piece of a larger franchise that is meant to sell toys and have sequels for the next 10 years. Movies that no matter how much exciting talent is behind Behind them ultimately feel like they were made in a factory. And Cruella feels exactly like that. The one side of this that really felt like it hammered home the punk aesthetic to an extent was the costume design. I thought these costumes were pretty fun and consistently interesting to look at, especially anytime Cruella crashed one of the Baroness's events. Those scenes were great, and I'll say it, I got goosebumps. But again, the grittiness and the vulgarity isn't there. Which I know it's a kid's movie, but what's the point of trying to act revolutionary if you're not going to do any of 
the things that define the revolution that this is about. Maybe it's something to do with the cinematography, but anytime it feels like the film leans into doing something uh, punk, whatever that means, they pull back and things turn sort of whimsical, that classic Disney feel, you know? Which would make sense for a remake of 101 Dalmatians or Cruella 2, whatever they're calling this next one, where she goes full Cruella de Vil, but this is the origin story. She's not supposed to feel like something more than that yet. How do I explain this? Well, okay, there's this really long one-shot sequence in here that takes us from the top of the building to the bathrooms to show just how at the bottom of the system Stella is, and this is a scene that really just summarizes, I think, everything I do and don't like about this movie. It's like, sure, man, it's impressive and I guess mesmerizing to watch this long, extremely well choreographed shot. I'll ignore the fact that this movie has Lion King money behind it, so they literally had all the financial freedom in the world to do anything they wanted to do, but yeah, it, it looks cool. And it's got a fun song behind it too. We'll, we'll talk about the music in a second. My issue is what on earth is this supposed to tell us besides uh, Cruella is at the bottom? There's a difference between how we see a world being built with patience and time when this technique is used in Boogie Nights or how much character development is happening for a singular character in Goodfellas, but here we're just kind of whizzing past shit for no reason, taking so much time to get to a place we already knew she was in. By the end, you're like, okay? Yeah, it looks kind of sick, but so does that viral video of the drone going through the bowling alley, but there's no plot development happening there. I'm glad we get fun stuff like this out of a Disney movie, but I just can't look past how empty it left me feeling, which is exactly how I feel about most scenes in this movie. It irritated me and... Okay, not to be that guy, boy did I want to avoid this at all costs, but I'm gonna bring up uh, Joker and I'm gonna talk about something that that movie actually did uh, right. I think Joker is also a very empty movie, we've heard that a million times, but I've always thought that it was a movie that knew how to build a rich mood, albeit a mood that has been done before and is just a modernized version of it, but a mood nonetheless. It feels like a movie that came from a singular vision. It doesn't go very far with it, but it does capture this feeling of Arthur being at the bottom of society. It feels hopeless. And I'm not saying I wish Cruella was Joker, I'm not saying that at all. And as cool as it'd be, I don't even think I'm wishing this was rated R. I wish this movie had an actual vision behind it, instead of the vision of a bunch of Disney executives painted across every scene that could have been something interesting. As for the actual Cruella character, Cruella is not a redeemable person. Uh, and the film sort of acknowledges that, kind of, but not fully because they had to make her likable enough for there to be a sequel. But so if you're gonna have a dislikable character, you may as will lean into it, make her life miserable, and then make her actions evil, but have a strong motivation behind them. That's like the bare minimum of creating an anti-hero. It's part of why I actually had high hopes for this, because Craig Gillespie actually just recently kind of nailed a film that tells this exact kind of tale, the real life story of Tanya Harding, where she came from, and why she did what she did. Tonally, that movie is super snappy, but it fully gets the tragedy of the situation, making for a very entertaining flick about a person we don't necessarily root for all the time. Most importantly, we feel like we get a full picture of her by the end. So obviously, when watching that, you're like, hell yeah, he should direct the Cruella de Vil movie. And he did, but instead of watching a Craig Gillespie film, it feels like it's just a Disney movie. We have a dislikable character who does have some motivations but never uses them, really. She's grieving through violence, but we never see any actual violence or aggression. Those few moments we do kind of lean into that, it just feels very watered down. And that's why I like that montage of her showing up at these events unexpectedly, because it does feel like she's in control in a really exciting and a disrespectful way, but that's such a small part of this big ass movie that spends more time developing backstory for a sequel and for universe building than it spends on, I don't know, telling one story for a single film, which is why in the end when the message is as simple as push boundaries but don't forget where you came from, you obviously couldn't care less. Now all that said, who cares about character development and emotional attachment for the Cruella de Vil movie? I fully agree, nobody was asking for a strong emotional arc here, we wanted a dumb fun time. Well in that case, uh, lean into that, get absurd with it. There's a tiny plot point at the very end of this movie that gives reason for something that I won't spoil, and it's super ridiculous. If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. And personally, I loved it. I was like, wow, that was a really stupid and predictable idea for how she gets out of something, but it was so goofy that it kind of works, and I like stuff like that. The same way that viral clip of Cruella saying her parents were murdered by Dalmatians, which was taken out of context for the record, 
also works. That's like a really tragic yet goofy backstory. It's exactly what I want out of a movie about Cruella DeVille. But those two moments were where the creative slash risky decisions kind of end, if you can call them risky. In between, the movie does not have a whole lot of fun with anything else. I guess they have a little bit of fun with the music, but let's uh, let's actually touch on that. There may not be 101 Dalmatians in this, but there are certainly over 101 needle drops, all of which don't last any longer than 15 seconds. Feels like every single time they cut to a new scene, they throw in another classic 70s or 60s song. It feels like someone left their Spotify open. And yeah, sometimes it works. These are all fantastic songs. Obviously, they're gonna sound good. But when you do that every five minutes, literally, it defeats the purpose, and those needle drops get really stale uh, really fast. Oh, and then there's the CGI dogs, and they just look terrible. I didn't like them at all. I, I don't need to explain. See, I don't think Cruella is the worst thing in the world, especially by modern Disney standards. This is actually one of the better things I've seen from the studio in recent years when it comes to live action remakes. It's certainly entertaining and flashy enough to get you through over two hours of a runtime, but is it anything more than the same Disney formula we've seen over and over again painted in empty filmmaking techniques that do nothing but try and impress? To me, not really. But hey, maybe Cruella 2 will be better? I sure hope so. And that's I guess my take, or at least why I think a movie with so much talent behind it still comes across so stale. So yeah, that's the Cruella video. Thanks for watching, go watch Cruella and form your own opinion, and I'll see you all in the next one.